A man lay naked on the ground, waiting for what awaited him was a terrifying zombie. Rick cursed silently in his mind. This woman was really a pervert. Jodies gave a faint smile, curious to see if Rick's tough exterior was unyielding as ever. Without hesitation, Jodies signaled her subordinates to push the zombie forward. The zombie drew closer, and Rick's mind raced to formulate a plan of action. <laughs> Rick wasn't one to sit idly by, waiting for his fate. The scavengers didn't expect Rick to resist even with his hands bound. Rick forcefully pushed away the man controlling the zombie, knocking him down, seizing the opportunity. Rick grabbed hold of the control rod. After a fierce struggle, Rick managed to lift the zombie's head off with the pole. Using the other end of the rod, Rick knocked out the man. Jotties attempted to shoot from behind Rick, but he sensed her and charged to disarm her. Rick pinned Jotties to the ground. Hearing the commotion, the scavengers rushed in with their guns. Surrounding the scene, Rick remained composed. He pushed Jotties closer to the zombie's head. If any of them dared to make a move, he wouldn't hesitate to act. Jotties was starting to fear the madness of Rick. She quickly raised her right hand, clenching it into a fist. The scavengers put away their guns when they saw the boss's gesture. We done. Hearing Jotty soften, Rick stood up. Jotty's just wanted to use zombies to scare Rick. After all, if Rick died Alexandria's safe zone will not let them go. They just didn't expect Rick to react so well. Once they were all on their feet, Jotty spoke up and asked, If we join you, what's next? Rick replied with satisfaction, The saviors are trapped, surrounded by thousands of zombies outside. You and your people will come with me there. Once people from the other communities arrive, we'll demand the saviors surrender. I'll personally take care of Negan. Jotties agreed this time, though they requested a quarter share of the spoils upon success. An hour later, an agreement was reached. They set off in a truck toward the savior's location. The vehicle halted on the outskirts of the savior's territory. Rick intended to lead them in quietly to observe the savior's situation, but something seemed to miss up ahead. Rick signaled the others to wait as he cautiously approached the scene. The sight before him troubled Rick deeply. The sniper from the safe zone lay dead. After dealing with the zombies, Rick tried to communicate with the other snipers using his radio, but received no response. Rick realized something was wrong and picked up the sniper rifle on the ground and climbed towards the top of the tower. Climbed to the highest point, Rick took down the gun and used the 8x lens to look towards the Church of Salvation. What he saw sent shivers down his spine. The thousands of zombies were gone, vanished without a trace. What was happening? Fear gripped Rick's heart. Rick didn't tell the scavengers what he saw but brought them to the entrance of the saviors to see what was going on. Could they already be at war with the saviors? As they approached, a scene of devastation met their eyes, with traces of piled up zombies on the ground. A front from picture. Rick yelled out instructions to Jotties. The shooter was at the windows. Everyone, return fire and retreat. But when Rick turned around, he found that the group had abandoned him and fled. Some things never change. Just as Rick pondered his escape, a vehicle pulled up in front of him. It was Carol and Jerry. They had also come to regroup here. Not expecting this situation, they realized the saviors had found a way to break free. The nearby snipers had been taken care of. Retaliation from the saviors was inevitable. They had to find a way to alert everyone. Carl crept into the woods while they were here. Carl's purpose in coming here was to find someone, a boy who was in the midst of killing zombies. Hey. The boy appeared visibly nervous, but Carl gestured for him to relax, assuring him of no harm. In fact, Rick and Carl had come across this boy before, but Rick had shot him discreetly to scare him away. Carl felt compelled to help him and had been searching for him ever since. Carl wanted to assist this boy, who was about his age. After hearing Carl's explanation, the boy introduced himself as Siddick. Carl offered Siddick food and water, soothing his nerves, explaining that not everyone in the apocalypse was a threat. Siddick had clearly endured much hardship. Carl's explanation helped Siddick let his guard down. He approached the food, drinking water in gulps. Once he finished, Siddick sincerely thanked Carl. Carl explained his intentions, expressing his desire to bring Siddick back to the community, though he needed to go through Rick's three questions first. How many walkers have you killed? I know it's hard to keep track. 237. Really? 
we'll take a couple. How many people have you killed? One. Why? The dead tried to kill him, but they didn't. You're making walker traps. Is that how you killed so many? It's, it's only part of it. My mom thought or hoped that killing them would free their souls. Siddick's responses satisfied Carl, and they set out to return to the community. On the way, the two saw three zombies eating a deer, and they slowly approached to kill it. Initially, it seemed easy, but more zombies arrived quickly. Siddick faced off against the zombies while Carl rushed to help but was knocked aside by one of them. He could only barely keep them from biting him. But another zombie comes along soon after and this puts more pressure on Carl. With two zombies he can't fight them off. Siddick was trapped by another zombie, unable to assist. With all his strength, Carl drew his handgun and managed to shoot down the two zombies penning him. Both of them are breathing heavily. It was so dangerous just now. Siddick notices that Carl looks a little pale and asks him what's wrong. Carl says he's fine and continues on with Siddick. Upon returning to the community, Carl instructed Siddick to hide in the sewer temporarily. Before formally accepting Siddick, Carl needed to discuss and gain his father's approval. After making arrangements for Siddick, Carl removed his blood-stained clothes at home. Carl's discomfort earlier was due to being bitten by a zombie in the abdomen. Knowing his impending death, Carl's calm acceptance and courage in the face of death were beyond his years. It was hard to believe he was just a child. Although he couldn't bear to leave his father in Judith Michonne, Carl showed great maturity and didn't cry hysterically. Carl stood on the wall, gazing into the distance. Rick and the others were out looking for the scavengers and wouldn't return immediately. Michonne had also gone off, leaving only a note for Carl, worried that he might not survive until their return. Carl started writing letters, addressing them to his father, Michonne, and his friend Enid, among others. With the letters written, Carl brought supplies to the sewer to help Siddick settle in temporarily. The rest of the time Carl is going to spend with his sister and try to leave some trace in her life. The most heartbreaking thing was that Carl always had a smile on his face, as if death was really a trivial matter. Soon, Michonne returned in her car. They greeted each other as usual. In the evening the whole Alexandria safe zone assembled again and prepared to leave for the Church of the Redeemer. Tomorrow was the agreed upon meeting time with Rick. Daryl thought that the zombie influx had decimated the saviors and that they just needed to wrap things up, not realizing that Eugene had helped the saviors out. As night fell, Carl intended to give some supplies to Siddick when Michonne called him from behind. They were about to leave, and Michonne wanted to say goodbye to Carl. Carl was just about to explain about Siddick when there was a knock outside. Everyone looks at each other in disbelief. How could it be the saviors? How did they get out of the trap? Rick and the other three are still driving, preparing to go back and deliver the message. At that moment, in the kingdom, Ezekiel sat despondently in the hall, suddenly hearing unusual noises from outside. He rushes out with his injuries to check. As soon as Ezekiel reaches the door, he hears the sound of someone breaking in and he has to run for cover, the saviors had arrived. Meanwhile, on the highway, Maggie led the hilltops people toward the Redeemer, preparing to rendezvous with Rick's group. However, they noticed a large tree up ahead on the road, something that hadn't been there before. Maggie realized the danger and immediately ordered a retreat. She called out twice but received no response from the group. When they turned back, several vehicles were closing in from behind. 
Tension gripped everyone, their only guess was that the saviors were pursuing them. Soon, a truck pulled up ahead of them, the door swung open, their faces turned grim. It was Jerry. The vehicles behind them were quickly brought under control. Now they were at the mercy of the others. Jerry was taken out of the truck. Two others carried a box and placed it in front of the vehicles, a coffin, 